If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel where we bring you new smart home content every week looking at Apple HomeKit, Amazon's Madam A, a little Google Home, and some Home Assistant. If that interests you, please consider subscribing. It's right there below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the first video in a journey of exposing non-Apple HomeKit supported devices into HomeKit using Home Assistant, which, as it at least for now, is the easiest way that I've found to do that. And so what we're going to look at today is specifically the Dyson Hot Cool Link fan and the Dyson fan. Uh, there is a video review on that. So I'll put that in the video details below for a link to that or uh, up here somewhere as well. But we're not going to really look at the capabilities of the device today. We're going to really focus in on how to connect it to Home Assistant and use Home Assistant to expose its capabilities out into Apple HomeKit so we can do things like voice control it using Siri or control it using the Apple Home app or even better, not even worrying about control it and just set up our automations to take care of that for us so we can get on with the more important aspects of our lives. Let's take a look. So we, Dyson fans don't have any Apple HomeKit support, right? Recently, as of like actually just today, as I found out, we've got some Siri shortcuts. So at least that's a step in the right direction, but we, we still can't integrate them the way we want to into our smart house. So I went looking around for this and found Home Assistant as a really super easy way to do this, which I think is accessible to anybody with a little bit of time and uh, inclination and just the, the willingness to learn something new. So what are you going to get out of this? You're going to be able to connect your Dyson fans or your Dyson Hot Cool Link heaters to into the Home app and into HomeKit and any other HomeKit supported app, which means you're going to get control through Siri. You're going to get to be able to use it with automations. Uh, you're going to be able to access and control the fan and the thermostat, as well as get access to the temperature sensors. The AQI sensors were not exposed at the time that I, I actually recorded this, but we may see that in the future, right? That's the beauty of open source. So let's take a look at how we set this up. Uh, you guys understand the benefit. The benefit is getting everything in one place and being able to do what we want to with our smart home system. Let's check it out. So secrets.yaml is the first thing I want to introduce you guys to. This is a, uh, a file that Home Assistant gives us to be able to store our our secret stuff, our usernames, our passwords, away from the actual configuration. Configurations you can share, passwords you shouldn't. So um, the Home Assistant.io docs configuration secrets, link on the bottom there, is what's going to allow us to do that. So the, the next thing that we want to do is, um, is actually we're going to go over to the components on the Home Assistant page, and we're going to search for Dyson. So again, link at the bottom of the screen. If you wanted to search for your own specific devices, this is a good way to see what kind of support you may or may not get. Uh, it also is going to show you how to configure this. So in our case, uh, I only have to put this in the configuration file. So this is literally a cut and paste. Um, your Dyson username and password, your language, and your language is going to pretty much be your, your a two character country code. So for instance, I'm in Canada, it's going to be CA, FR for France, GB for Great Britain, US for US, and so on and so on. And then it's we simply go over to our configuration file and cut and paste that in. So in my case, I've kind of already done that here. So it's going to zoom in on this real quick. And as you can see, um, I have username and password is going to be the exclamation mark secret Dyson username, Dyson password. And what that's going to tell Home Assistant is that we won't need to go over the secrets file to actually get that variable. So now we're going to do that. We're going to put that in the secrets file. So again, it's just going to be Dyson underscore username. And then you would put in whatever your username happens to be. And you're going to put in Dyson underscore password. So these two variables, the first parts on the left, have to match what's in your config file. And the username and password obviously has to match what your actual username and password would be. So for Dyson, that's going to be generally your uh, email address with your password. We check the configuration to make sure that we didn't get anything wrong. And then you restart it. It's that simple. All right, we're just going to hit click on the restart button. And we're going to have to wait for the configuration to be loaded. So we'll do a little video magic. And we come back into our Home Assistant screen. And you can see now that we actually have this thermostat looking thing. Uh, we also have um, some office air quality. We have some temperature, some humidity, 
and these two fan components, right? So these are actually the Dyson fans. I've got, in addition to the hot cool link uh, that I did a review on, I've also got just the regular fan. So the office is um, my hot cool link, which is where I get the, uh, the, the thermostat looking widget from. So I have the ability, this can be either a, uh, a fan for cooling off or a heater in the winters when it gets a little bit cooler, right? Which is, that's what we want. Um, we also have the ability to adjust the fan focus or diffuser mode. So that's not going to be exposed into HomeKit uh, simply because we don't have that kind of a concept of uh, a diffuser or focus mode. So now that we've got this set up, you see how easy that was. We really didn't do much. We, we cut and paste some stuff. We put on a username and password. Um, now we're just going to go over to HomeKit and see what this looks like in the HomeKit side. So originally I'd filmed this as one video. So if you want to see uh, the add-in of the Home Assistant into HomeKit, you can go and check in the video link. I'll put a link up here. Um, but essentially, as I added this in, I just put in the HomeKit code. And then all of the all of the objects, all the devices within Home Assistant just magically appear as being exposed by the Home Assistant bridge component. So once you've added that in, this is what you're going to start to see discovered. Um, so for instance, you will see you will see the fan for a bedroom. You see a home kit fan gets exposed. So this was the Dyson bedroom fan that I have. So I'm going to name this Dyson bedroom. Um, it's pulling these names directly at a home assistant. And if I want to, I can also, of course, adjust the room. We're going to go in and look at specifically what these look like later. I'm going to get a temperature um, object, a temperature sensor exposed, right? So again, I'll call this the, the Dyson bedroom temperature. There we go. Um, we're going to get the office fan. So for the Dyson office fan, it's going to get exposed as the thermostat component, as well as it's going to get exposed as the um, the temperature sensor, as well as the fan. So from a home kit perspective, it actually looks like three different accessories or three different objects. So it's something like some of the other things we've seen there, like a Philips Hue sensor that's a motion light and um, temperature sensor. All right, so uh, there we go. Uh, one of these is the thermostat piece. One of these is the temperature sensor, which is why I named them uh, temperature one uh, and temperature two. So now let's go over and take a look at the device itself and see what kind of controls we have. So you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have the Dof Dyson office fan. We can just tap it to turn it on or off. And of course we have the, uh, the heater as well, which currently is set to a temperature range, you know, set to uh, 20.5 or 21 degrees. Um, it looks and feels suspiciously like a thermostat because really that's what it's exposed to HomeKit as, right? So I can set it to uh, auto, to cool, to heating. Um, you can see here it is a climate. I've got a firmware. None of that really means that much because that all that information is coming from HomeKit. It's not coming from Dyson themselves, right? The other thing I found is with the fan, um, it starts to respond. It's pretty good, but it will always go down to a percentage of, uh, you know, an even percentage as the fan is really only uh, able to operate between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm I'm not going to have the ability to kind of mess around with it too much. Um, this is not a perfect integration. This isn't a perfect solution. The way the path that this is actually communicating with Dyson is it's going from HomeKit to Home Assistant, Home Assistant to the Dyson Cloud, Dyson Cloud to the Dyson fans themselves, right? So it's that's what it's doing. Not an ideal situation, right? This isn't um, the best situation for us from a uh, a HomeKit communication path. So there there are some glitches with this, right? But what it gives us is it gives us the ability to have the Dyson fan integrated, which is a lot better than we would have otherwise, right? We may never get HomeKit support from Dyson. So giving us uh, Home Assistant, giving us the ability to do this, I think is a net plus plus, at least for me. Right, so the other thing I wanted to look at is automations. So to do that, I'm going to go into the Eve Home or Eve Systems app, which is, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, my top pick for a free vendor-provided HomeKit app for setting up complex automations. So we're going to go over here into the rules, and we're going to add a new rule, because essentially that's what an automation is. And we're going to go start looking for triggers. So we can add a trigger here, and we could use... Um, a bunch of different things. We can use motion, contact, temperature, humidity, 
air quality, any of those kinds of things. Again, you've got a whole list here that they organize it and kind of guide you through the process a little bit. So if I want to look at air quality, for instance, right, I have any of these air quality sensors that have been exposed to HomeKit currently right now in my, in my home. If I want to look at uh, temperature, for instance, I can use the temperature one. And if we kind of scroll down here a little bit, you can see, there we go, Dyson bedroom temperature right in the middle there. We now have the Dyson available to us exposed into HomeKit. So part of the beauty of HomeKit is um, combining all these devices from different vendors. So let's not use that Dyson sensor. Let's instead maybe uh, we'll use the Eve room and we'll set up an air quality task. So if the air quality is worse than um, four stars, I think it's what I got it, five stars. Uh, we'll make it worse than four stars. So if it goes beyond uh, three, four, yeah, let's go for four. Uh, if, if it goes beneath, if it's worse or equal to this, then I want to um, I want to do something, which is I'm going to want to turn on the fan, right? So we're going to go down here at the bottom. We're going to say, okay, let's set up a scene now. And the actions that we want to set is we actually want to turn on that fan so that it um, starts to clear out the air. So the Dyson, uh, the fans have a purifier built into them. It's got that HEPA filter. So let's take advantage of that. The air quality gets bad. Let's turn on the fan. Let's make it active and set the rotation uh, of the fan to, say, 40%, you know, or, or 45 or 50 or whatever. Again, this is always going to round to a, uh, a round number of 1%, 2 or 10%, 20%, 30%, uh, just because of the nature of this. We can also set the oscillation or the swing mode within here. So now that we've done all that, we just set up a name. And again, what's cool here is if we had a, uh, a HomeKit fan of any other vendor, this would look identical, right? Because that's what HomeKit gives us, is it gives us the ability um, to, to, to work with different vendors' equipment in different ways. So we're going to add in a rule name here, a unique name for the rule, Eve Room Air Problem, turn on Dyson. So nice, something nice and descriptive makes it easy, easy, easy to figure out afterwards. And that is it. So we'll just click into this really quick and verify the rule does what we think it should be doing, that it's enabled. So it is uh, enabled, the air quality worse or equal to good, turn Dyson fan on to 50%. That is the name of the scene that is going to be enacted there. Kind of cool. So that is the HomeKit experience with Dyson fans enabled through Home Assistant. Hope you guys found that interesting. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you want to see more videos of this style of, of what you actually get when you incorporate non-HomeKit devices through Home Assistant into HomeKit. Um, definitely it's something that I'm thinking about and I just want to figure out what your interest is. If I missed any questions, uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. Home Assistant, as I've said more than a couple of times, is, is not... It's not for normal people, but it, it is not an impossible thing to get involved with if you just want to spend a little time and learn something new. Definitely do not be intimidated by this. And with that, subscribe if you haven't already. Likes are always appreciated. Sharing is always appreciated. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little bit smarter using Apple HomeKit, subscribe to this channel, and we will definitely help you out with that. See you soon.